Welcome to the Pretty Powerful Podcast, where powerful women are interviewed every week to share real inspiring stories and incredible insight to help women or anyone break the barriers, be a part of innovation, shatter the glass ceiling, and dominate to the top of their sport, industry, or life's mission. Join us as we celebrate exceptional women and step into our power. And now, here's your host, Angela Gennari. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Angela Gennari, and this is the Pretty Powerful Podcast. Today, I am super excited to talk to my next guest, Fabian Fredrickson. Thank you so much for joining us, Fabian. I'm so happy to be here with you. And we're speaking with you, and you are in France. Is that right? I'm in France. I live in Paris uh-huh. uh, as of, the, I'm on my seventh year and we just wow. bought a house in Provence and I just arrived today. So oh I toggle gosh. between Paris and Provence. Wow. What an amazing, beautiful life that must be. Mm-hmm. So I am so envious. <laughs> so <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. So I want to introduce Fabian. So for 20 plus years, Fabian Fredrickson has powerfully mentored thousands of women business owners to grow and then scale their businesses, earning them tens of millions collectively each year while increasing their time off to enjoy the lives they love. Her leverage leverage business methodology is based on nearly 15 years of experience in generating multiple seven figures annually with three children at home while taking 14 weeks of unplugged vacations each year. It's proven to work. Oh my gosh. Please tell me all about that because I, I struggle <laughs> with too. I struggle with taking one week <laughs> a year. So Fabian's revolutionary book, The Leverage Business: How You Can Go from Overwhelmed at Six Figures to Seven Figures and Get Your Life Back, is the new definitive roadmap on how she's done it with with heart and how you can too without sacrificing your life. So thank you so much. I am super excited because I think one of the hottest topics that people are are really engaging with right now is balance, right? Because the pandemic taught us like, hey, I kind of like my family. I'd like to hang out with them a little bit more. And hey, yeah. I like having a little bit of downtime in my life because I've been grinding through, you know, the last few decades. And, you know, now at the end of this, here I am, and we may not even have jobs at the end of this. So I think balance has kind of been the slap in the face we all needed to you know to say hey listen our lives matter let's enjoy them while we have them let's not wait until retirement when you know nothing is guaranteed to us and so um, I am so excited to talk to you because I think this is a really important topic and you know I think that uh, what is most exciting to me is that you talk about being able to leverage your business so that you're not just you know stepping back and taking a huge hit to have balance. You're not taking a major financial hit. You're talking about how to leverage what you have in your business to actually still make money, still grow, but also have balance. So let's dive in. Yeah, it was actually funny because um, this this I just got this uh, WhatsApp from a, one of my friends two days ago who is uh-huh. a Leo like me, like and me, he, yeah, <laughs> like you. Okay, great. And and he's like he's like Fabian you're a Leo with a Libra rising. I'm like spilling the beans. Right, right, right. (laughs) And he's like, I'm a Leo with a Libra rising. And he's like, I laughed out loud when I read that Leos with a Libra rising are all about doing a little bit of work and getting a lot of results. (laughs) Right. And I'm like, and he's laughing because he knows he's like, that's the ultimate leverage. You're the leverage queen. Yeah. And here's the, here's the deal. There are way too many people who are, if I may say so, I'm just going to go straight into it, Yeah, who've bought into so many of us women, but guys too, who've bought into the fact that the only way to be successful is to work your tush off, Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. And the only way to have a great life is to sacrifice. And I do not believe that. I, and everything in the leveraged business is about that. And the whole premise is what got you here, Angela, Mm -hmm. wherever, whoever's listening, what got you here at six figures, or maybe you're not yet at six figures, or maybe you're at multiple six or seven figures, but you are sacrificing your downtime, your, I'm just going to use a word that's very French, your pleasure Mm. is not what's going to get you there. Right. And so the whole premise of everything that I've been teaching, 
especially over the last 15 years, is to grow to seven figures and multiple seven figures with your life back, being able to take an unplugged vacation, Mm -hmm. like three weeks, take August off, take December off, is to do less better. Yes. Oh gosh, I love it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so so I can't I, we can unpack all of that. Yeah, this. we can unpack <laughs> that all day long. But the the and the, the book has eight leverage activators. And what I mean is people uh in my industry, their coaching industry, there are plenty of people who make seven figures. Not sure. many who have three kids at home, but there are plenty of people who make seven figures. But between you and me, they're working all day long, all mm-hmm. night long. They cannot go on vacation without saying one more email and I'll yeah. be right there. Right. Yeah. yeah. So how, how do you do it? It's about, and people ask me, how do you do it? It's about reverse engineering. How do you have a crazy delicious life while your business runs itself? So a self managing business mm-hmm. that grows while you can choose to, you can choose to take time off. You can choose to uh, just only do stuff you like in your business. And it's this series of activators. So it starts with, I mean, and we, you, you lead this conversation, but it's like, it's all about doing less better in all these different areas of your business. Okay. I like it. So I am um, an ENTJ, right? And so efficiency is really, really, really important to me. And so I, I, I have low tolerance for inefficiency because time is money, you know, time is important to me. And so I, I can appreciate doing less, but more effectively. And so I, I do find though, that I still work way too much, you know, and I think part of it is my, um, you know, I'm always having, Hey, we should try this. And instead of, you know, making somebody else the guinea pig, I go ahead and take this on. I'm like, okay, we should try this new software. We should try this. And then I kill myself learning it. (laughs) And I don't really step back and say, okay, is this a good efficient use of my time? Or can I delegate this? Yeah. So here's what happens. So Mm. our friends who work in a corporation or work Mm -hmm. from somebody for somebody else, usually when I, when I teach this from a stage, I grab an index card and I write on the index cards uh, and the index card delivery, Uh right? So delivery is um, getting paid to do the work. So our friends in corporate, they clock in at nine, they clock out at six, they are paid to deliver, right? Whatever that means, right? We are paid by our clients to deliver. Mm -hmm. So that's what's on one index card. I agree. We are different from our friends who work for somebody else because in addition to that, our friends don't have to market. So we have a second index card that says marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have to market our business and get clients. Right. Right. Okay. Yep. Third index card, selling. We have to close the clients because we can have leads, but if we don't learn how to close the sale, there's no money. Okay. So that's third index card. Fourth, team, Mm -hmm. hiring, firing, delegating, (laughs) managing, right? So that's, and then we got finances. That's like your seventh or eighth index card. And then, you know, there's customer service and then there's like, all the stuff, legal, mm-hmm. taxes, HR. Oh, yeah, well, we already mentioned HR, but yeah, it's like, Aunt Angela, we have a minimum of three to four full-time jobs if you combine all of those. Yes. And then on top of that, you, I, and a lot of people listening to this are high idea generators. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Especially if you're a Leo like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So we are blessed to be people who are visionaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We look for opportunity everywhere and the, we're we're never short of ideas. And, and, and the, the problem is we don't easily follow through, even if we're focused on efficiency. And here's how I know this. I've been a business coach for 21 years. I have been blessed and honored to have worked with tens of thousands of people. I know that sounds crazy, okay? Between our private clients, the people in our membership and 
thousands of customers and people who have come to my events for, for 13, 14 years. I have them do assessments, two mm -hmm. assessments. And what the assessments tell me is that they are people who love to start new things. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> yes. Right. Right. You know what? Right. Shiny object. And, yes. you know, squirrel. And, yes, you know, yeah. really excited. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I don't have to tell you. And we're also most of us, 95% of us are like that. And also we're not wired to finish things. Correct. Yeah. So we oh, have yeah. tons of ideas mm -hmm. and we get a project to about 60 to 80%. And then we lose steam. It's no longer interesting. We move on to the next bright, shiny object. And this is what happens is we get overwhelmed. So now we have these eight index cards of mm -hmm. jobs and we've got all this stuff we haven't finished. We're overwhelmed. And we're most of our friends who work in corporate, they'll shut it down at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. and then go home and they pick mm -hmm. it back up in the morning. We put the kids to bed. Yep. And then we go back to our computer. That's right. Yep. Right. That's right. This is because we haven't leveraged the important aspects of our business. And by the way, this is normal. This whole high idea generation and not following through. Right. Right. If you right. think about the word entrepreneur, it comes mm -hmm. from the word, the verb entreprendre in French, which means to initiate Oh, interesting. We're fabulous. <laughs> We're fabulous initiators. Right. We just can't follow through on every idea. Right, so right. So here's what we need. We need to leverage the team. Mm, okay. You know this. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you have a team, right? You, you I don't, do. You don't get do. to where you are when mm -hmm. you, you're you're at a really great place. You don't get to where you are without a team. That's right. But most people don't have the right team or else let's explain it this way. The team that got you here mm -hmm. won't get you there. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. I agree. You, you so, have to, your team has to grow up with your ideas. Right. Mm -hmm. And your team, what you want with your team, ideally, and this is, we, we, this is the first chapter of the leveraged business book is that your team should run your business for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the myth is that we should run our business the myth is that everybody who starts a business should run their business this is not true we're not wired yeah. to run our business because we can't follow through on everything right right we right, don't right dot all the i's cross all the t's mm -hmm. and so we need to have a collective group of people who are uniquely wired to follow through on all of our great ideas the ones that make sense to also to get the people who work with with us and for us to be intrapreneurs mm, okay. i don't mean entrepreneurs yeah. intrapreneurs so, so what does that one of mean? the things mm -hmm, so one of the things that we teach in our program is that the from the get go before you even hire anybody, you put it in your um, job description, wherever you put it, and you say, we are an intrapreneurial company in the sense that when you come in here, yeah. we are a process-driven company mm -hmm. yes. and we have transparency and everything is tied to results. So we say, if you are looking to, you know, a cushy thing, uh, and you're trying to get away with getting as little done as possible, this is probably not the right place for you because mm -hmm. we have accountability here and stuff like that. However, right. if you are somebody who's hungry to make a difference and you want to use all your skills and you love being part of a team that is kicking tush and taking names and you want to be recognized, you want autonomy, you want to be celebrated, you want to use mm -hmm. all the things that you're great at, this is going to be the the place for you. You will have that autonomy. You will, it's like, basically they will have their own business inside your business. Interesting. And when you hire the right people, and I'll tell you, I'll give you um, something that I, it's not even in the book. I'll share it here. Mm -hmm. Gretchen um, Rubin wrote a book called The Four Tendencies. Okay. Do you know who she is? No. 
Okay, so the four tendencies basically um, breaks down, categorizes people into four cat categories. Okay. And she says, you're either uh, an obliger, an upholder, a questioner, or a rebel. Hmm. And, and, uh, and it's all about how you respond to inner and outer expectations. And basically, an obliger responds to outer expectations, but not okay. inner expectations. An upholder responds to inner and outer expectations. A questioner, inner expectations. And a rebel, I'm a rebel. I don't respond to either unless it's fun and I want to do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so the way that you hire, you can you can have people take assessments when you're hiring them mm -hmm. to respond to your expectations. And that's a hack that nobody I know is using, mm -hmm. but you can build a team. This is one of the many, many things that, that we share. You can build a team that is so excited because they love to respond to expectations. Interesting. I like that a lot. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Cause I think that's the hardest challenge that I've dealt with in my business is getting, you know, the people closest to me, um, to share my vision and want to push through the initiatives, you know, because, and I found that sometimes the hardest people to hire are from the corporate world because small business has a very different mentality, right? Like you really have to come in and grind. There's no cushy positions in a small business. Everybody has to be working their butts off to make it work because I'm, I'm telling it's you, hard. yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was mm -hmm. just going to say that, you know, so when I hire, I've hired people from, you know, corporate backgrounds who have, you know, hey, I've been in corporate for 20 years and I've climbed this ladder, but they're the, they're the ones who want to delegate to other people. And in small business mm -hmm. world, you kind of have to own that. You have to own your, your, your position in that company. And I don't find that a whole lot when you hire from corporate because they're used to having a, a support team around them. You know, and, and I feel like there's a lot of entitlement. They want to mm -hmm. come in at a hundred thousand or something like that. And I'm thinking, well, that's all good. Right. How are you going to pay for yourself? Yes. Because exactly. in a company like ours, there's no cushy hundred, hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollar position. Mm -hmm. You got to pay for yourself. And right. Then some. Right. And I'll tell you this the whole the we have a bold heart hiring process bold heart is the name of my company and and if if somebody is uh wondering why i bring that up there's a bold heart hiring process that says i will not talk to anyone unless i know a few of their assessment scores okay interesting we don't hire without assessments it's a mm -hmm. waste of time it's a waste of money especially when you're hiring and then three months later, you know, what the honeymoon is three months, like you're mm -hmm. like four months, five months, six months. And you're like, they're not getting it done. Right. It's because you're not leveraging the right type of person for that position. Every position needs its own wiring. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, it definitely does. Yeah. Because, <clears throat> you know, we've had positions where, you know, somebody has left the company. And so we've morphed that position into another position and, it, and, you know, personality wise, it may not be a good fit. So, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, just, you know, tacking on extra duties to somebody because another person has left isn't necessarily the best role you have to hire for that position. Absolutely. And uh, different people, however, this sounds different people are different. Mm -hmm. So your salesperson needs to be wired totally differently than your customer person, customer relations person, than your data entry person. Right. Then, then your finance person, right? It, it, I, I mentioned this in the book, we hire using four criteria. I'll mm -hmm. list them now. The first one is experience. This is a given, right? You know, the second one is skill set. This is a given. Yeah. Although those two, you can Hire if you know you can get somebody out of school without experience and without skill set, and you'll teach them, and then you you know pay less because they're just out of school. But those are the negotiable ones. The non-negotiable ones are wiring. Mm -hmm. Are they wired to be in that position? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I have I have I have gotten people's uh, re results, 
And the whole team has said, oh, they're great. They're great. And I look and I'm like, nope. Yeah. However, however, however much, however you can judge me for being rude and not getting on the phone, but I'm like, I'm not talking to them. Mm -hmm. They're a lovely person, but it will be a waste of their time and my time. If we have this conversation, it will be a waste of their time and our time as a company, because we will not be the right company for their bigger future. And they will not be the right person for our bigger future. So there's that. So that's the wiring. And then the fourth is culture fit. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can't make somebody be wired other than how they're wired. And you can't make somebody fit your culture. You can't force somebody to. Yeah, absolutely. So if your company is like positive and loving and above and beyond and, and own it and speak up and always improving, and they're not that way, you can't make somebody be that way. So I know we've spent quite some time talking about leveraging the right team, but it starts there. And that's why it's chapter one of the book. And the first Mm -hmm. module of what we teach is because it starts with the team. Once you have the team, you can leverage systems. Once you have the team and the systems, you can leverage your time. Once you have your team systems and time, you can leverage your business model. And that's what helps you get to seven figures with your life back. Yeah, absolutely. So I couldn't agree more. The team is so important. And we actually, we do a different assessment in my company. We do what's called the, um, you said this, I heard that. Have you ever heard of this book by Kathleen Edelman? No, tell me about it. So it it is, it's an interesting book. I actually, it's, she's a a Christian based author and I learned about it actually in church one day. And I was like, I've got to read that. And now it's something that we actually do with every new hire in our company. And so I have a very you know, kind of dominant red personality. So it, your personality type is is put into categories of colors, right? So you're red, blue, green, or yellow. And so, uh, it, and then it's divided up into the, those four categories are then you are an extroverted process oriented person, you're an extroverted people oriented pro, uh, person, or you're an introverted people oriented or an introverted process oriented. And each one of those things will interpret what is said in a different way, right? So it's more about temperament than anything. And it's about communication style. Yeah, so it's about communication styles. So for me, I tend to be very direct and efficient. And so I may not start an email with like, Hey, Fabian, how's your day going? I hope your kids are good. How's everything at at home? Did you enjoy your vacation? No, I'm going to get to the point. I'm going to say, hey, I needed this thing on my desk at three o'clock. How far are we? What's the ETA? Right? (laughs) (laughs) Whereas somebody who is a yellow personality will go into a whole lot of the, how are you? How are you doing? I'm a process oriented person, right? So I'm focused on the result, the end, the, you Mm -hmm. know, Know, what is the function that we're discussing? Whereas a people-oriented person is going to focus on the person with the process being secondary. And so how I can c- communicate with my team makes a difference, right? So if I know I'm talking to my recruiter who is a pretty solid green, so she's introverted, people-oriented, so like the opposite than me, right? I have to maybe, to, to be effective in communication, I may want to tailor that a little bit more to get more out of her right and so that she doesn't think I'm being stern or demanding and so you know for me it just is hey I was just asking what the ETA is and she's like are you mad at me (laughs) you know and I think that that communication style really makes a big difference in the office environment or in a team environment right because if your team is communicating it's almost like speaking different languages right so you you don't want to be offensive to somebody but yet you want to get your point across so maybe you can tailor that a little bit more to get more out of people to to have that more effective of communication that's that great. A fascinating I, I love it mm-hmm. I'm telling you this is this I I even use these assessments in my marriage with my children sure absolutely. I have learned uh-huh. that when I know what he's how he's wired differently or how which what my kids 
wiring is, whatever we'll call it. Yeah. I feel, I feel like I can speak their language more, which yes. makes me understood more. And honestly, this is, it. that's, that, if I could add another chapter, it would be leverage your communication, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I think with, with every relationship you have, even with my son, you know, sometimes I'll say something to him and I can tell that, you know, this has hurt him or, you know, or, or he's trying to explain something to me. And I realize I have to be patient because he's communicating to me in the way he does best. And just because I'm like, hurry up and get it, you know, (laughs) I have to be patient. I have to like, you know, really pay attention to his communication style so that, you know, he knows that I'm engaged in the conversation. But I think it's, I think it's fascinating for every aspect of life. But I think when you're talking to clients and when you're growing your business, it really does make a difference because you want your clients to know that you hear them, right? Because at the end of the day, we all just want to be heard. We all just want to feel like what we have to say is relevant. And here's the, here's the thing is that here's what I've learned. Every person on earth wants to be seen Mm -hmm. right just what you said seen heard right they want to feel significant yes Mm -hmm. and I know this is crazy to talk about in business but they want to feel loved yeah yeah absolutely I don't know a single person if you were to stop one of your friends one of your you know children if you're listening or a person on the street and you said could you use more love in your mm-hmm. life? Would you refuse more love in your life? No one would refuse more love. Everybody would say, yeah, I, I, I'll sure. I'll take more love in my life. Yeah. There are people who are not even that loved at home. Mm-hmm. So yeah. one of, so this is actually what, one of the things we talk about in the leverage your marketing activator, the leverage your marketing activator is getting back to how do you get to multiple seven figures, seven figures, multiple seven figures with your life path is to change how you market. Okay. And, and part of that, I, I, there's two parts. There's a, there's a practical part, which we can get to. It has the 80, 20 role. And I know you like efficiency, so we can mm-hmm. talk about that <laughs> in a second. But the, but the emotive part is that if you, and I understood this a long time ago, and it's also, I like, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm, mm. I just love, I love love, right? Yeah. But I started thinking about, wait, everybody on earth wants to be loved mm-hmm. and everybody wants to feel seen, heard, like they matter significant, but they don't necessarily feel that at home or they don't feel loved enough. Wait people go where they are loved. Yes. So yes. what if everything that you did in your marketing was not only valuable, but it, it, it was a love letter. Oh, interesting. Okay. Right. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So however cheesy it sounds, and I've had people come to my events and be like, I just had to meet you because I can't believe that you sign your business emails. Love Fabienne. I'm like, well, this is who I am. And this is our culture. Right. Right. And, and she's like, oh my God, this is, this is you. This is actually who you are. And what I have found Angela is that when you full on love people in your marketing, it doesn't matter what industry you in because you're mm-hmm. you're not marketing to a corporation you're not marketing to a tractor you're marketing to a human being right and every exactly. human being wants to be loved and when you can love and appreciate them and make them feel seen heard and and, com- and you have compassion for them they will pay attention they will come back to your marketing messages as if they were a gift mm. and then they will sign up with you refer, return, and stay for a long time. Wow. I love that. And so just to kind of circle into this is the difference between a woman owned and a man owned company, because how many men would say, let's love on our customers, let's love on our our employees. And, And so this is, I think, one of the big distinguished, you know, parts of being a woman, you know, being a woman owned business is that we can see that in the impact that it has, and the compassion and the empathy and the, you know, let's, let's, let's show emotion in business. And let's, you know, I know that, you know, there, there's a, what is the marketing terminology where they say, um, what is it? 
it just I'm escaping me right now, but it was basically like you want people to know why does this matter to me, right? And more than that, they say um, if you want somebody to to pay attention, tell them why does this matter to to them, right? Like that's how you sell something. How do, why does this matter to me? Don't just come in and say, hey, my product does X Y Z. I want to know how your product that does X Y Z impacts me why does it matter in my life right and so i think that that also kind of circles back to the the show people that you care by actually saying hey i think this would improve your business and be a problem solver you know i see that you might be struggling with this this is how i think we can improve your business what do you think and you know kind of give them that engagement here, here i totally agree with you in human relations mm -hmm. in the end everybody wants to go going back everybody wants to feel significant yes. and if you go into whether it's a networking group or you're on stage or yeah. you're in a sales conversation and you're like let me tell you about my 30 years of this and blah 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 blah, blah <laughs> and they're gonna right. tune out yes instead yeah. if you say let me guess you're working longer hours mm -hmm. than you really want to you pay yourself less mm -hmm. than you than than you you know wish you paid yourself. You're not taking enough vacations. You say too many times, one more email and mommy will be right there. Yeah. You wish that you could give more, travel more, make a bigger impact. You wish your business was going further. You wish you weren't so tired at the end of the day, and then you stop talking. Mm -hmm. The right person will say. How do you know so much about me? <laughs> Tell me more. Yes, absolutely. You, you start with them. Mm -hmm. You start with them. You get their you get their attention by saying, "I see you." Yes, and then yes. you shut and then you shut up. Yeah, <laughs> and then they say, "So tell me more." And then you say, "It doesn't have to be this way." Yeah, and then you tell them what it can be like. You can grow. You can make a bigger impact. You can get yourself out of day out of the day to day operations of your business. You can do only the stuff you like and delegate the rest and delegate effectively mm -hmm. and have people that you love and that you trust who keep taking things off your plate and happily and who buy into your vision and who say, let's grow this thing together and know. Do not stay, go be with your children, go on vacation, take yes. the month off. We got this. Right. Right. You, you paint, you paint that for them. You don't have to say that much more. Mm. If it's the right person, they'll say, okay, yeah. all right, let's talk. Right. And then you can tell them about you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or whatever your version of a business is. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's so valuable, such valuable advice, because I think when we're hiring, we're so focused on the resume and, you know, we're not ultimately engaging their heart. you know, we're engaging their mind, you know, what can you do for me? How fast can you do it? But instead, if you're, Hey, what matters to you and how can we give you that? Because I want you to give me something that matters to me. And so how, where do we come to that compromise? You know, where, where can we, where can we figure that out together? You know, you get what you want out of this. I get what I want out of this and together we're growing and we're accomplishing our, our goals. So I think that's okay. a good way to hire. And, uh, you know, instead of, you know, I, I say all the time with people when I'm hiring, I say, I can teach them whatever skill they need to know. I can't teach them to be a good team leader. I can't teach them to be, you know, hospitable in a, in a, an event environment where we are, you know, I can't teach them to engage. I can't teach them how to have a great personality, to have confidence. I can't teach them any of those things. I can only teach them the skills. So I would rather have somebody who has a great personality, who's hungry to succeed, who wants to do the right things for the company. I'd rather hire that person with no experience than somebody who has 20 years of experience, who's very set in their ways. They have their own plan of how it's going to get done. And, you know, your, your job is just the next one that they're going to take off the resume. <laughs> you know, I would much rather hire the hungry young person. Who we, my husband and I, my husband, yeah, my husband and I work together and we have this kind of like a code thing uh -huh. when we are interviewing somebody, I'm happy to share it with you. It's, um, it's, you're, you're either hungry, mm -hmm. you're either famished, like I'm famished, right. you're hungry or yeah, I could eat. 
yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah you know how like you're like do you want a sandwich to somebody and they're like yeah I mean I could eat yeah and I'm looking for I'm famished Mm -hmm. because I've I've had people within my my company that I've offered a, a bigger position to and they were it was they were like yeah and I I slapped my husband and I, all I just said was she could eat and he's like yep <laughs> and, <laughs> you know we, we, we didn't go further yeah. <laughs> and I think yeah. that's what you're describing right yeah absolutely absolutely so yeah I, I agree with you so I'm I'm just fascinated by this book and I, I cannot wait to dive into it I am going to read it and um really understand a little bit more about all of these these leverage opportunities so tell me um if you're at a plateau like we we had talked a little bit right before the podcast about you know when you hit a plateau and that's where i feel like i've I've gone with my business like we've reached the goal you know we've gotten to where we want to go but now we want to make that next jump forward you know so we're we're in a great place um that next jump forward i don't know you know like you were saying what got you here won't get you there right? So yeah. how do you take that leap and that next jump forward? I've got a team, we're operating, we're doing exactly what we need to do. We're exactly on track to meet our revenue goals for where we have been, but we're still on that plateau. How do I, how do I reach that next level? Are you open to hearing it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You probably have become the bottleneck in your business. Uh-huh. Yeah. You're, I don't, I don't you're disagree too much with you. in yeah, you're too much in your business. Mm-hmm. Here's what happens, okay? When you and I started our business, yeah, we had a hand in everything. Right. I call it being a control enthusiast. I'm not going to use the other <laughs> word, right? right? A control enthusiast uh-huh. because we had to, because we had no money. We couldn't right. afford the team. And mm-hmm. it was just like, we had to control everything to have it be the way we needed to. And as we grew our businesses, we're like hiring people, we give them a little bit, but we're like, we're, we still want to, you know, run this by me before. And we, you know, we're in too many meetings and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And what happens is what, you know, once you get to a hundred thousand, 250,000 a year, it's okay. But after that, when you're at multiple six figures and seven figures, being the bottleneck is the worst thing you could do. Now, yeah. the, the, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with being that because you we didn't go to bottleneck school, right? right. <laughs> we don't, we don't, right? We don't know. I mean, until until what I the leveraged business program, like there, yeah. I don't know of a leverage your business school, right? And so what's happening is that most of us were not taught to hire a team to run the business for us, but a team that we trust so that we don't have to helicopter manage them. Yes. Okay. Yes. Once we have the right team in the right seats with the right vision and they're entrepreneurial, then we create, we leverage systems and it becomes, it's about becoming not a personality driven company, but a process driven company. Mm. And the team creates the process according to a few very important set of criteria and then they run the process. Yeah. It's not a personality driven business. It's a process driven business. Now, what happens to the business owner who previously was the bottleneck and had a hand in everything mm-hmm. is now she's got the team. This takes about three to six months. Okay. It's mm-hmm. not overnight, but it doesn't take two years. It's right. Three to six months. You got the right team running the right systems and it's a culture thing now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then the business owner trusts and can pull herself out of the day-to-day operations of the business. And she's not then eating bonbons on the sofa. She then starts to think about what's my 80, 20, what's the Pareto principle of my time. Mm. Now here's the very cool thing. Most of us are working too many hours. Remember all those index cards that I talked about? Mm Mm-hmm. The thing that needs to happen is we need to get really clear on our unique brilliance activities. Oh, now, if you look okay. at one of the things we, this is what we teach in year one of the program is that you, uh, you'll sit down at some point and you'll map everything you do into four quadrants. And there's the unique brilliance quadrant, okay, which is where uh, 
you make 80% of your money, okay. but most people spend 60% of their time in their, I, I can do this quadrant, the competence quadrant. Mm -hmm. That's where you make no money. Yeah. Yeah. So when you remove the person from competence and incompetence activities and you bump them up with the right team, the right systems and the right boundaries uh, into their unique brilliance activities. And most people don't know what their fourth, it's usually three to five unique brilliance activities. Once mm. you know what those are and you set up the whole process to just live there, boom, mm -hmm. you're working on not only in your unique brilliance, which feeds you, which like, you're like, you're crushing it. Like, this is what you would do for free all day long. And right. ironically, this is the stuff that will make you money all day long. And then you take that because your team has taken all this extra stuff off your plate. So you gain back about six hours a day. Then you use that time on exponential growth activities. Okay. Not necessarily money making, money generating activities. Yes, they can be part of that, but exponential growth activities, which at Bold Heart we call EGAs, as opposed to NEGAs, non exponential growth activities. And the way okay. you figure that out, other than figuring out what your unique br brilliance activities are, is um, how you use your time. Mm -hmm. The Pareto principle. Hmm. Pareto principle states that 80% of your activities produce 20% of your results. Okay. Yeah. That's about so your inefficiency gal. That's not yep. that great. Right, right, right. That's about accurate though. So uh -huh. if you think about it, yeah, your time, I agree. Right. So you're basically you're wasting, if you're working, you know, uh, 10 hours a day, you're, mm -hmm. you're wasting eight hours of your day yes oh uh, gosh putting uh, it in real terms uh, like that seriously <laughs> right it hurts it, it hurts, hurts. It, everybody everybody that I talk to when they first come in and they do this exercise they're like man what have I yeah. been doing all these years oh, conversely 20 yeah. percent of the activities that you're working on right now produce 80 percent of your results right Mm -hmm. Bing. Now let's play a game. Let's remove the 80% of activities or delegate them. Okay. You take the 20% that already produced the 80%. Guess what we're going to do? Turn the 20 into the 80. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's leverage. That's leverage. Absolutely. That's leverage. Yeah. That's how you scale your business exponentially in about 24 months. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's something I think as entrepreneurs, we could really work on because I mean, you're absolutely right. There's so many times in my business that I think to myself, you know, I could be doing something that's more efficient with my time, you know, and, and there's a million of those things, right? A million of them. And there's so many initiatives I want to take on, but I'm too busy working in my business and not enough time working on my business. And so I try to pull myself out of the weeds and I'll even tell my team, okay, guys, I don't need to handle these things. I'm stepping back so that I can work on the business. But then what has happened and what I have created this culture of people who default to me, right? And so yeah. there's so many times where I'll get a call from an employee saying, hey, I'm looking at the schedule for next week and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, why are you on the phone with me? There's three yeah. other people in the company that handle schedules. This is the one thing I don't do. And I've tried to train people and say, listen, if you've, if you've called me and said, I, you know, I want, you know, this changed in my payroll, I need this, this, and this. And I will say, I'm not your gal. Like I would love to help you, but I don't do that. I don't do that function anymore. I've, I've delegated that function. I said, if you want something to go into a black hole and just stall, give it to me. 
give it to me because I have yeah. too many things on my plate. And so everything just stalls, you know, people think, oh, I'm just going to call Angela and it'll get done. No, no, no. What happens is it gets put on the list as like, you know, item number 27 on my to-do list and it will continue to be on it's that to-do list for the next three weeks. So this is the bottleneck. Yeah. And this yeah. is where I keep telling people, I'm like, listen, p- please stop. C- if I'm the only person on your email chain, you're doing it wrong <laughs> because yeah. copy the people. But, if but so you, see, if it's no, then fine. But other than that, it's, copy the people who it's a, it. it's a, it's not a thing that can be changed overnight. And I think mm. I sense the frustration. Yeah. It's a systemic yeah. issue in the sense that we have to go leverage quite a few things Yes, before that happens. Now, again, it won't take long. Mm-hmm. But I have to unwind myself. It has to be a conscious decision to do that. And to also, you know, like I'm trying to re-educate my team about that. But it it is like I've created the bottleneck myself by needing to do everything and by being the default. And now I'm trying to unwind it. And it's so difficult to re-educate and like re-inform like, hey, guys, this is not a me thing. I don't have to handle this. This is not something that needs to come across my desk. It's great if you copy me on an email, but the email should be sent to our office manager, our recruiter, our, you know, this person, that person. So, you know, it really does. I've created, you're absolutely right. I've created a bottleneck and that's why, you know, my time is probably 80% inefficient because I need to unwind myself from that. There is a point at which you or anybody who's listening to this can absolutely no longer be in the weeds in your business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no longer the bottleneck Mm -hmm. no longer working on things that you don't like to work on and instead you're only doing what you love and that comes to you naturally yes that you love to do you got the team who knows exactly what to do how to do it they're following a process we didn't even talk about leveraging accountability Mm -hmm. okay But when you leverage your accountability in the business, the team holds itself accountable to reaching the goals without you pushing them. Yes. So then you are focusing on what is the big 10x vision? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And within two to three years, you're looking at your numbers and you're like, how? Mm -hmm. How did this happen? And I worked so much less. Yes. Yes, absolutely. That's the goal for sure. And, you know, I'm, you know, my son is 16, I'm running out of time with him and, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, it matters to me where my time is being spent right now, but yes, you're, and also you probably want to set, I mean, I'm, I, my sense is that you're an amazing mother, right? Thank you. Um, my, I think that we also want, I mean, I have three, I have three teenagers, mm. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> uh-huh. but I, I, what I sense is that most of us want to also be really great role models for our kids. Oh yeah. And we want to show them how to, how to make very good money without killing themselves in the process. Absolutely. And so there is the piece about becoming the example for our children. Awesome. I love it. I love it so much. Okay. So I know we're running out of time and I need to ask you a couple of questions. So, you know, you have been such an inspiration and I am just dying to open this book and and start reading through it because I think there's so much valuable information in there, but what advice would you give to your 18 year old self? Oh, I would, I, I, the, the reason I put, I've named my company Bold Heart, which doesn't sound like a business training company, but it's because I really believe that, and I wish I'd known this when I was younger, is I would, I believe in putting your ear to your heart mm. and listening hard to what your dreams are instead of listening to others. Wow. So boldly listening to mm. your heart and then boldly going after it unapologetically and and le- and and pushing out the naysaying voices yes absolutely 
Awesome. I love it. So tell me, um, as women, we often give our power away. So we will give our power away to mm-hmm. our spouse, to our coworkers, to people on the street. And I think that that is a natural reaction for a woman. If somebody tries to give us credit, we immediately dismiss the credit and, mm-hmm. you know, we give our power to somebody else. Oh, it's because of so-and-so that I was successful. So, mm-hmm. and then, but, you know, stepping back into our power is very difficult. And I, I imagine that you have done both, you know, and that I think as all women, we've done it. Right. So tell me about a time that you that you gave away your power and then tell me about another time that you stepped into your power and what made the difference for you in those two to those two occasions gosh throughout my life I've done both yeah I I, I'll tell you one of the bold can I tell you about like a time when I was 25 but it marked me yeah so I remember I was I was dating this boy and we were at a party. I know this sounds crazy to talk on a business call, but we were at a party and we are surrounded. We're in a circle surrounded by his friends and I'm talking and yeah. he interrupts me. Wow. And I mm-hmm. was like, hi, I'm not finished. Oh, good for you. <laughs> good. For and you. I, I just said that. I'm like, I'm not finished. Mm-hmm. And his friends are like, Ooh, she just put you in your place. And I was like, I didn't finish my sentence. Right. And yeah. from that moment forward, I realized we as women have been reared societally mm-hmm. to take second, be, to be second class. Right. But I don't believe that. Good I believe that the divine made made us absolutely equal, mm-hmm. absolutely worthy. In fact, I wrote a second book called Embrace Your Magnificence. And the first chapter says, you are holding two babies. They're different cultures, different. They they look different. They're from different places. You're looking into their eyes, each of them. That's a personal growth and development book. You're looking into uh-huh. each of their eyes. Which one is more, more valuable, more worthy of love and all of the abundance in the world? When you're looking at their little eyes and they're gurgling up at you, what's the Mm -hmm. answer? Neither of them are worthy of more love than the other. Right. Both. Mm -hmm. And you, you, we are that baby now, maybe like 30, 40, 50 years later. Right. And so, so the divine made every single person on this planet as worthy and deserving of abundance as everyone else, no matter how we've been reared. So whether we're feminine, masculine, all the things, I answer, everyone is worthy of love, abundance, and all of the blessings that this world has to offer. Absolutely. Could not agree more. Well, And one more thing I have to ask, what do you wish more people knew? Mm, How magnificent they are and how worthy and deserving and how they could actually, here's the thing. I really believe um, my father passed away in December. And one of the things that I gave in his, oh, thank you. That's very kind. Um, In his eulogy, I said, here's what I learned from my father is that he always said, quel est ton objectif? What is your objective? He would, Mm. every time I I battled with, what do I do? And he would always answer, what's your objective? What's the end result? And and I translated it, but it was like, Fabienne, get clear. Mm -mm. Then reverse engineer and get in gear. Wow, that's beautiful. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Yeah. And that's how we came up with the leveraged business because women were asking me, how are you? You're now at like multiple seven figures a year for now. I'm on my 15th year. Good for you. I take a crazy amount of vacation, crazy yeah. amount, but I'm, I'm still very present for with all the team and everything and the clients. And I said, okay, let me reverse engineer. Yeah. And then I came up with the it's like I leverage this, I leverage this, I leverage the eight leverage activators. And then I just now I teach them how to use them to get in gear. So get clear, reverse engineer, get in gear. 
I love it. I love it. Thank you so, so much. Great insight. I have really, mm. really enjoyed this conversation mm. and Thank such you. valuable insight for all of our audience listening today. And I cannot encourage everyone enough to please go buy your book and learn this for themselves and reach out to you if they need a little help in leveraging their mm. own lives to reach mm. that pinnacle of where they want to be. And it's not just about the money. It's about the the quality of life right and Absolutely. so um definitely i'm jealous of you having uh your house in provence i have to i may have to come <laughs> crash <laughs> you but, should it's really nice <laughs> but but no i i think that's uh, it's very admirable and i am so incredibly appreciative of your time and and your insight today so thank you so much fabian for for your guidance today thanks angela i loved being here with you yeah so this is the end of our podcast today. Thank you all so much for joining us. And um, please do reach out to the pretty powerful podcast.com. You can find all of the information for Fabian, and then you can also uh, check out her book. So thank you again. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. Thank you for joining our guests on the pretty powerful podcast. And we hope you've gained new insight and learned from exceptional women. Remember to subscribe or check out this and all episodes on prettypowerfulpodcast.com. Visit us next time. And until then, step into your own power.